Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Constructing Explanations with Evidence, Level 2, Explanations with Evidence. You can see as we open up the box that there's a ruler, so we're going to be gathering a little bit of evidence. An explanation, remember, is basically telling us how a phenomena works or what is the cause of a phenomena. And so just like we've done in the last video, we're going to try to figure out with any phenomena what's causing that phenomena. And so a way to start thinking about it is using those words of cause and effect, where the phenomena is the effect, and then our question is what's causing that phenomena or what's causing that effect. Now, like any good explanation, you don't just start with an explanation. You start with a little bit of evidence, and then we come up with an explanation with some reasoning. So after watching this video, you should be able to come up with explanations with evidence for something like this used word find book, or it could be why we see differences in corn growth in a field. I'm going to start by showing you how we find explanations with evidence for something like used crayons, and then you'll have a chance to do it with some nickels once we're done. So let me clean this up and we'll get started. Okay, so for this first one, I've got some crayons, and the first thing you should always do when you have crayons is open them up to see if they're new or see if they're used. So let me line them up. So you can see the way these are lined up that I don't have perfectly new crayons. And so let me write down now what the phenomena is, what the effect is, and then I'll phrase that around cause and effect. So the different lengths, uh, crayons of different length is going to be our effect. It's also going to be the phenomena that we're going to try to explain. And so what I've placed here is a cause. So we don't, that's what we're trying to do with an explanation. We're trying to figure out the cause. Let me write that in terms of a question. So the question that we're trying to answer is what caused the crayons to have different lengths? So whatever goes in this box, that's what we're trying to figure out and that's going to be our explanation. So the first thing when you're doing explanations with evidence is you always want to start not with the explanation but with gathering some evidence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these crayons for a second and then I'm just going to write down what I think is important evidence. So for the first evidence, what I wrote down is that this blue crayon is broken. I can see that someone's taped it back together again. And then you can see that the paper has been ripped a little bit. So that's the first bit of evidence that I gather. We call that just qualitative evidence. What do I see? Other powerful evidence that you can gather is to actually do some measurements. So now let me measure some of the crayons and I'm going to record that evidence here. Okay, so now I've gathered a little bit of evidence on the crayons themselves, and I found that the shortest crayon is going to be the blue crayon at 84 millimeters, and then it kind of increases till we get to the red, purple, black, and brown, and those are all going to be 93 millimeters. And so this is me gathering evidence where I'm measuring, this is me gathering evidence where I'm just observing, and so now what I have a chance to do is I have a chance to come up with an explanation. What is an explanation going to be? An explanation is just going to be what causes that change. So let me write that in. So you can see that the explanation that I've written is that crayons, especially the blue, were used to color. That's why they're called crayons and coloring crayons. And so I wrote over here that the cause is coloring and the effect is that they have different lengths. As you use it more, you're just wearing the crayon down. So now I've got an explanation, I've got some evidence, and now what I have to do is I have to write the reasoning. What is the reasoning that connects this uh, evidence back to the explanation? So let me write that down. So the first reason I said for this one is the blue crayon is used the most since used crayons are worn down more and they're more likely when you're using a crayon you're more likely to just break it when you're pushing down. So that's my reasoning there. Let me look at some reasoning here. So 
So for the next one I said these ones, so these ones right here that are not as long as these ones have been used more because as you use the crayon then the crayon isn't, or at least the wax is not on the crayon anymore, it's on the paper that you're actually coloring on. Now let me write some reasoning here. So what I wrote for these crayons, the red, purple, black, and brown, new crayons that are bought have the same length because they haven't been used. And so I could make a explanation that these ones right here, since they all are the same length, they were never colored with. And so what is this now? This is an explanation with evidence and reasoning. This again is my cause, what I think is happening to the phenomena. This is my evidence and this is my reasoning. And you kind of would write this as a statement. You read it from left to right. Crayons, especially blue, were used to color. Then I'd talk about my individual evidence and then the reasoning that goes with that. And so this is in explanations with evidence. Again, when you're trying to figure out what's evidence, what's reasoning, I always think the explanation is the cause, the evidence is what I observe or measure, and then the reasoning is me just basically saying, why is this evidence important or how does this evidence help me make this explanation for the phenomena that I have. And so I've walked that through that really slow. What I'm gonna do is clean this up and then you're gonna get a chance to do one of these on your own. Okay, for this next one, what I'm gonna do is kind of start with the phenomena to explain it a little bit. So what I have here are some new nickels. So these are newer nickels. I'm gonna put these on the scale and they're gonna have a mass of 49.45 grams. And now I'm going to put some old nickels on this and they're going to have a mass of 50.19 grams. And so let me write down what the phenomena and the effect is. So the phenomena is going to be new nickels are lighter than old nickels. I weighed a bunch of nickels and it ended up being that the old nickels are always heavier. And so now let me write down what the question is. So the question that we're trying to answer is what causes the old nickels to be heavier than the new nickels? In other words, what we're looking for is what goes in this space. What is the cause of new nickels being lighter than old nickels? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing down some important evidence. Okay, so the evidence that I've written down is that the new nickels are lighter than the old nickels. So we've got the mass there. I also looked at the ages and the new nickels are all found from 2006 to 2022. And the old nickels are going to be much older from 1952 to 1986. Those are the dates in here. I also, and you can probably see this, that the new nickels are shiny and they're real clean. And the old nickels are tarnished. You can see some of these are a yellowish color. They also have scratches and they're damaged. So this is going to be the evidence. So I can use this now to make an explanation. What causes the change in the nickel weight? So let me write that down. So what I'm thinking the cause is, is these old nickels have been in the environment longer and so something's been added to it. So as an explanation, I said exposure to the environment over time has added material to the nickels. So I'm thinking these are heavier because something got added to it. Now what I have to go through is I have to connect each bit of evidence here to that explanation. So let me write that out.
Okay, so for reasoning what I wrote, uh, for the first one, since we have differences in mass, my reasoning is that something was added, since nickels probably when they come from the mint or from the factory are going to be the same mass. Um, this data on how old they are, I said the old nickels have been in the environment longer. And so it's kind of like an experiment was done. These ones have been longer than these ones, and so that's telling me there's just a, a longer amount of being in the environment itself. And then the last one, just the color differences, is the scratches show use, so that's kind of that they've been in the environment. And the color means that some foreign substance must have been added. Since the new ones don't have it and these ones do, it must have come from the environment itself. And so again, what's my explanation with evidence? It's an answer to the cause of the effect, which in this case is going to be the nickels. And so for me, I always go through what's the evidence, what's my explanation, and then why is this evidence important? So now that we've done this one together, you could try to do a word search. I've got it linked up in the slides down below, or you could even do a science example when you're looking at differences in corn in a field. And so that's explanations with, help, with uh, evidence, and I hope that's helpful.